So now before I put the intake manifold on, I want to put on my oil filter because I want to uh, circulate some oil through this engine utilizing the oil pump so that I can um, verify that everything is lubricated so when I install this engine and go to start it for the first time none of the bearings and nothing in the engine is dry. Now I'm going to pour in the remainder of the oil that I was using to lubricate the bearings and stuff as I was putting the engine together and the other four quarts of oil to make it a full engine. So now before I install the intake and the valve covers I want to pre-lube the engine. I don't want it to be dry when I do its first start and even though I put oil in the bearings and I poured oil all over down in the valve gallery I don't want to start it and have some dry spots inside of crankshaft, camshaft, any of that stuff. So by pre-lubing it, it will solve that issue. I made a tool that fits down over the pump shaft and I can put it in a drill motor and I can operate that to spin the oil pump. When the oil is in there, I will turn it down to one because I don't want to spin it real fast. Hook it up. Put it on my drill motor, verify where the pump shaft is down there, hook it in, and spin my oil pump. Clockwise rotation, because that's the direction of a small block Chevy, and you just seen oil come out of my oil. pump plug on the back of the motor. So, in order to get oil to circulate a little more, I'm going to keep doing that, but I'm going to put my finger over this plug. So for the intake manifold gasket set, I'm going to use the gaskets that come in the full Felpro gasket set. Um, I don't like these with these little edges that stick down to kind of hold them in place. I prefer the ones with the little tits on them. They hold it in place much better. These seem like they can squirt out, uh, but some blocks, I don't know what year they changed it, but some blocks do not have the little holes to use those gaskets, then you have to use these ends. Um, so I will, I like to uh, clean everything down with a little bit of carburetor cleaner. Put a little bit of black silicone in the corners, both top and bottom, and then I like to go across with a, just a, a thin amount, not much. I'm not a big user of, of silicone, I, uh, I just like a small amount as I've said before. It will just coat those surfaces all the way around for two reasons again. Sometimes you have little imperfections in the steel that are just uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's going to be there. Then I will also put a little bit around on the water jackets just to give it a little more sealing area there. Uh, I don't like the idea of getting water down in my oil. I don't like that idea at all. It doesn't take long and your engine's junk. So we'll go around all the water ports. Just like that. Now then when you're putting your gaskets in place, when I say gaskets, I'm talking about your side gaskets. They do say this side up. So you want to make sure to put them with this side up. 
So verify that on your gaskets themselves. Okay, now I installed the end rails and I will put a little bit there and a little bit there and then just a smidge going along this edge. Call me paranoid, but I want this to hold up for a long time and uh, I'm not very fond of any kind of leaks. Okay, so on that gasket, as I said, it says this side up, right there. So, we will set that gasket in place. Tabs in where they belong. Other one says the same thing. This side up, right there. Make sure that the tabs go down inside the rubber corners here. Then once again, just pick that there and move it up into there. Add a little bit there. Just a little around this surface. Sure, that's down into place where it belongs. It stays there. And the intake manifold for a small block Chevy, my year anyway, and the few years there before and after, I'm not sure if it's all of them, is 30 foot pounds of torque. I'm going to be reusing my old intake manifold which is a Wien Action Plus dual plane aluminum intake and I got some 3 8 stainless steel bolting and some 3 8 stainless steel washers to go on there with uh, that to hold the intake manifold down. So here is my intake manifold. I'm going to set that down into place without moving anything. Come down real gentle. Set it into place so that everything stays where it's supposed to be. Then you can start putting the bolting in. Now where I can't get in here to do the torquing, I will just use a box end. I'm not going to get too excited. 30 foot pounds is 30 foot pounds. and. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. I can usually feel where 30 foot-pounds is. So it doesn't worry me too much. Make sure you don't drop nothing down inside of the distributor hole. I'll take these all down so they're good and snug.
Not too concerned with the torquing pattern either. It's going to work my way from the inside to the outside if I remember right. That's what it is. But it's pretty hard to torque these inside ones, being as though you can't even get a crow's foot in there. Oh, I'm sure GM makes some special tool that you might be able to get in with. And if I pulled the carburetor off, I could probably get in there with a swivel socket, but a swivel socket doesn't give you an accurate reading either. So as I said, I'm not that concerned. I'll be able to feel what I've got and be reasonably close. Okay, so now we'll start here and we'll take it to 20 foot pounds, which is where I'm set right now. And the torque is supposed to be set for 30. And you want to hold the torque wrench up here and not pull crooked because then you're, you're not getting an accurate torque. You need to hold the torque wrench up here. It does two things. You get an accurate torque with it and you also get on the head square and straight. It keeps you on the head square and straight. If you're not on the head square and straight, it could slip off of the head of the bolt and screw your bolt up. You could end up smashing the torque wrench into the carburetor. All kinds of bad things can happen. So you always want to hold your torque wrench up here on the top side. And no matter what anybody tells you, adding all of this junk in here also changes your torque a little bit. But I like to use a six point socket. It's a half inch torque wrench and uh, the six point socket I have is the deep well socket. So I could take this uh, extension off of here which would make it a little better. We'll make it a little bit closer. So now we'll take it up to the 30 foot pounds which is what the torque is supposed to be set at. I gotta put my glasses on because I can't see what the hell I'm doing. Okay, I'm set for 30 foot pounds. Before I go in and do those, I'm gonna pull on the center ones here again. I probably get more than 30 foot pounds on these center ones. Watch out because these babies can harm your fingers when they slide off the heads. Okay, now we'll go back to where we were at 30 foot pounds. There we go, 30. And there we got 30. up again after the engine warms up and runs for a little while I will go back through and verify these are tight because sometimes they do loosen up a little bit now we'll go back through them again, 
See, I already got some on that, so didn't get much on that one. I'm getting a little bit on each one of them, so you're going to want to go back through, maybe check them again the next day, and then again after run-in. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, leakage. This gives you a very good starting point right there.